Hey guys, I'm Ivan Novik from the Green Plum product management team. I'm super excited and honored today to have the founders of Green Plum here. Okay. So I'm, I'm Luke and uh, you know, I actually went, when Green Plum first started, uh, I was uh, uh, heading a startup focused on transaction processing, but before that, I was actually building supercomputers for uh, big Department of Defense uh, people and also weather forecasting. And now I'm actually working on financial uh, data analysis using artificial intelligence. I'm Scott Yara, and uh, I'm the other co-founder of Greenplum. <clears throat> and uh, prior to Luke and I putting our two companies together, uh, I was a founder of a company called Matapa, and we were doing a bunch of custom engagements for AOL and AT&T. Uh, to do log-based analytics. Well, you know, I started my company in 2000. Scott, you started yours in 1999. Yeah. The difference between the two is pretty stark, yeah. but we both struggled for about two years after starting our companies and uh, found ourselves struggling for existence, really. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Scott, uh, being a scrappy survivor, had, had scrapped together a contract with AOL to build this kind of clickstream database. And, and that was a, a very uh, great thing to keep the, the company alive. And, and I was calling around looking for customers of transaction processing using our parallel scale out transaction processing. But Scott was, was in the middle of building this data warehouse and said, well, we don't really do the transaction thing, but we are having some issues with our, our data warehouse type thing. That's right. And that's kind of how we met. So, uh, Matapa had been a scrappy startup and uh, were looking to just survive and had signed a couple of contracts with AOL and AT&T um, to do this sort of log-based analytics. Okay. And, um, uh, but we really didn't know what we were doing, candidly. <laughs> and uh, so the systems we built actually weren't scaling. And uh, that's when we came across uh, Luke and, and uh, John Eshelman and yeah. a lot of the original folks that built uh, the first version of Green Plum Database. And I think about 2002, 2003, we decided to put the company together. Well, and, and you know, some background on that is that I'd been hearing, uh, you know, it, as we were talking to people uh, post-2001, um, I had the same thing keep, keep mm -hmm. coming back, which is, you know, we really don't have a transaction scaling issue, but we do have this analytics, analytics data, yeah. database problem that we're trying to solve, and it's really not working very well. Right. On these, and some of these places had spent millions and millions and millions of dollars on the equipment. And so parallel technology applied to that problem, which then you found a TISA, which was had a, a machine Jeez. with secret sauce exactly. and specialized hardware. <laughs> and I think but in the DNA of both of the companies with Todd Papiano and yep. everybody, you know, your guys and our guys are kind of going, isn't there a better way? Right. You know, and at that point, we kind of started to say, you know, if we join forces, we could attack this market. But there was that point when we were first starting when I remember being in the room mm -hmm. and I remember looking around and I said, so we're going to beat Oracle? <laughs> and, and it was kind of that question mark and we all kind of looked at each other and said, yeah, you know what? We're going to go beat Oracle. That's right. Sounds good. And then did you guys start with Postgres straight away or did you change well, to... Well, uh, that was actually a decision uh, uh, process that we went through. Well, it, in my company prior, we had gone through and evaluated MySQL and, and uh, you know, CloudBase and a couple of other databases and then, and then concluded that Postgres was the one that was closest in syntax and numerical representations to Oracle. And so we had based our technology on that one. Uh, and then when we got together, at, you know, post uh, figuring out that we were going to build this thing, uh, we said, yeah, you know, Postgres seems to be the one that has the most community. Exactly. Because one aspect of it was that we felt that we had to get, we had to, comp if we were going to compete with Oracle, we had to compete with the or the army That's of right. Oracle um, uh, SEs and everybody who had been trained by Oracle to tote the Oracle line. That's right. But were you trying to compete with Oracle across the board or towards a certain segment of... We felt that, that the workloads had changed and were, and the future of the workloads were going to continue to be, be much more along that in, uh, analytical analysis kind of realm and that Oracle had a, a big weakness there. And so it, when we looked at the 800-pound gorilla, uh, we knew we were going to compete with them in the field. And so, you know, we had to compete with Oracle. I mean, it was sort of that. You yeah. know, we had to. And it's sort of odd to say now, but we were segmenting the market at mm -hmm. a terabyte and above. At a terabyte. That's right. Okay. Terabyte. Yeah. That's <laughs> Terabytes right. were a lot of data, you know, 13, 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, and then quickly, you know, we got into the tens of terabytes. And then 
multi hundred terabytes. Do you remember the cost per terabyte was the metric we were using mm -hmm. as a comparison, and the cost of a terabyte at Teradata was a million dollars. That's right. Right. Yep. So we had a million dollars per terabyte of of managed system. And ultimately, I think our initial competition, we, we set fifty thousand as mm -hmm. our as our target, mm -hmm. fifty thousand dollars a terabyte. Yep. How quickly did other customers kind of appear and show interest in this? Solution? Oh, lots of interest, Very tremendous interest. In fact, you know, Scott, you and I were on the road uh, mm -hmm. immediately, kind of, you know, as we were building product, yep. we were kind of out there talking to to companies like. E online mm -hmm. and, City and double click yeah. and city search, and and really aggressively going out and saying, hey, you know, we'd like to tackle your workload with our prototype technology. That's right. And we were failing, yep. but we were learning as we were failing. Mm -hmm. And and everybody that we talked to was was uh, hitting for us. Yep. I mean, they were basically helping us to, to get past it. They That's wanted right. you to be successful. That's they right. really wanted us to be successful. Yep. And I think if it weren't for those early interactions, we really wouldn't have had the right design and the right... Including Mark Dunlap at Amazon. Oh, yeah. That was <laughs> and what was the interaction with Mark? Well, Mark was running the data warehousing team at Amazon at the time. Uh -huh. So Luke and I made a pilgrimage up to go visit him. Uh -huh. And we... Didn't have much more than a prototype and some slides, um, but he saw that uh, we were at least thinking about the problem the right way, mm -hmm. and uh, we're two passionate entrepreneurs, and we're going to solve the problem one way or the other. So he politely told us, you know, he had nothing for us uh, <laughs> at the moment, but you know, stay in touch. And then, sure enough, you know, he uh, basically led our field engineering team for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, he, you know, he joined us and, and mm -hmm. left Amazon. Was and, instrumental uh, in designing, absolutely. you know, like for instance, external, external tables, tables was his, you know, uh, concept. Exactly. And you know, those those little nuggets of wisdom coming directly exactly. from field experience. I've got to those. throw it in there that we just released the S three external tables last week. Ah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> outstanding. Yeah. That's that's right where it needs to be. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Like we said, O'Reilly was our first paying customer. I think they gave us thirty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. <laughs> but that was but, the only software they'd ever purchased. It was. Right? It was. <clears throat> and O'Reilly actually was very instrumental in that early community that was building around um, big. What was sort of you know big not data. even people were calling it big data at the time. I, I still attribute you know Roger Magulis to coining that term. Uh, but but they had basically collected. Um, they were collecting job feeds mm -hmm. from various search engines as well as a bunch of book trend data. And they were trying to get early reads on where the trends were in technology. And then would they decide what books to publish? Exactly. And uh, I'd never forget it. Roger came over and uh, we had taken the data set that he was running in MySQL. And uh, we loaded up in Greenplum. And uh, he kicked off the query and then he assumed we would break and go for lunch because it had <laughs> taken so long in MySQL. And, uh, before we had even figured out like where to go for lunch, the query returned, and he said, "You know, something's not right here. Yeah. It's not working." <laughs> yeah. And he was just blown away by how fast it was. Well, yeah. and and then, again, you have to put yourself back in the time. Yeah. Uh, it, back in the time, they had built the biggest, baddest uh, server they could they could yeah. imagine, and run the all the best features of MySQL because right. it was so fast yeah. right at the time. Yeah. And the hundred gigabyte data set that they were processing. On the biggest baddest server they could they could do was doing the query in eleven hours. That's right. And so they're like, oh, well, let's test this new green. <laughs> they came to the office and and they're you know I knew the guys were in there testing. I'm I'm out of their hair you know yeah. whatever. But then I started saying, hey, uh, come on over here, take a look at this. You know, there's something going on here because they, they had typed the query in and like you know hit enter and they said you know Frank came up to me and he's like, hey, you know I, I ran it but it came back too quick. Yeah. And so we we're, we're and I saw them all gathered around the terminal like you know <laughs> looking at the thing and they're like typing it again and again and again it was running between 4 minutes and 6 minutes. And yeah, it was giving the right answer. Exactly. And this is on a cluster of like, you know, six nodes uh, in the back and it's a really and amazing it'll time. cost less. So, what about the early days with Finra? How did that go down? FINRA was a lot of fun. I mean, kind of going back to the irony, uh, we, we built out actually a, a great group of people in sales, right? Yep. We had just killer sales. We really did. And one of the things that we, we were doing is we were going in and, and looking for where people were spending a ton of money. And we had found on Wall Street, you know, that the, that the FINRA group mm -hmm. was was actually doing massive amounts of data storage. And FINRA is what? It's the... It's the regulatory <laughs> agency that actually scrubs all the stock data looking for irregularities. Okay. And they're sort of a pseudo-governmental, but they're a private firm, right? 
Um, and they were, but they're responsible for archiving and analyzing all of this enormous volume of stock data. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, w w I, I was brought in, and I think it was through Billy, and you know, we set up a, a, a meeting with, uh, with the guy who was running their data operations. And, and it was kind of like tough, because I was sitting there, and he's like, you know, we already have Oracle, we already have this and that, you know, and it works. I'm like, okay, well, so tell me, how much money are you going to spend this quarter on storage, just tell me that alone. And I didn't think he'd answer the question, <laughs> right? But I just threw it out there. I'm like, tell me how much you're, you're gonna spend. He says, $8 million, like all proud. You know, I'm spending $8 million <laughs> on that. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Because for two and a half million dollars for your, however big it was, right. uh, I can not only store that data for you. This is when we had the relationship with Sun yep. and we were building the appliances based on Thumber. I can not only store it for you, but I can analyze it a hundred times faster than you actually can analyze it with your current Oracle systems for the same two and a half million dollars that you would otherwise have spent, you know, over here. Eight just million, for storage. Just for storage, eight million versus two and a half million. Now the sales guys out there might say, well, you gave up too much, but remember, we had to get them to move. And exactly. that actually was was tremendous in, in moving and, and immediately a light bulb went off and he's like, oh, I get it. And until we kind of figured out how to do that, and that became kind of a, a sales ongoing motion. thing. Now EMC starts taking notice when we start taking <laughs> really eight million dollar deals and sidelining. They really did. And uh, but but that was common at the time was that we were really in the process of disrupting and transforming an existing industry a pocket. Mm -hmm. It was really fun. Well, so Sam uh, was our CEO that okay. we had found. Actually, you knew you knew Sam back from, from the Sandpiper days. Yep, he was sort of CEO for less than a year, um, but that's how the name Green Plum came about. Oh, how did it come about? So Luke and I were searching for a new name because we had just put our two companies together, and uh, we couldn't come up with any. Yeah. We had a bunch of really bad names. Yeah. Zosie. Exactly. Zosie. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so, for Sam. exactly. So Sam came to us one day and he said, "Well, you know, I I have a name, and uh, my daughter came up with it. You know, my nine-year-old daughter. Do you guys want to hear?" What and he it was is? embarrassed. He was embarrassed. He yeah. was like, "You know, guys, you know, we've been sitting here for two days on the whiteboard." <laughs> He's like, "But I was talking, to, telling my daughter last night, and she's four and a half years old. She came up with a name. I don't know." Yeah. And so she said. The first, her first suggestion was Apple. Apple. Yeah, because it's such a cool name. Yeah, it's a good He's name. He's like, that's a, great name. <laughs> that's a great name, sweetie, but we can't, can't name it Apple. So after they passed on Apple, um, they she suggested Green Plum because uh, it was Sam's favorite fruit to eat. He was Lebanese, and was. so he would eat green plums mm. you know, with salt and yep. vodka, and yep. that was his thing. And, and she Luke, saw him doing that, and right. she's like, well, why don't you name it a green plum? Right. And Luke and I did a quick domain search, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. kind of shrugged our shoulders and said, yeah, that's a good name. It's yeah. Yeah, and that was it. Color and fruit. And then we did all the analysis. Yeah. Like, color and fruit, is it a good color? Does green, does green say that it's not ready? Or is green, like, you know, fresh and like spring flowers, you know? It's like, okay, so, you know, we got over it. It turned out to be a good name. Yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah. So, so how about the, the open source aspect of this? And, you know, originally Green Plum was not open source, but we were coming from Postgres, which was open source. So how do you see open source playing into the future? Yeah, I'm really excited because it's, it's kind of a return to where we started. You know, we um, obviously started on the Postgres <coughs> code base. Mm -hmm. But more than that, when we first came to market, we actually marketed ourselves as a commercial distribution of Postgres. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and, we should have um, let Sam's daughter name that one. Exactly, exactly. That was actually a community selected name, which is uh, thank God it was uh, before Reddit. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> the army, so, exactly. But but we had so we put a list out there, and Bizgress came up. Came up top. Okay. <laughs> and um, instead of Bodie McBoatface. And then shortly after that, too, um, again, uh, O'Reilly was an early customer. Then mm -hmm. Tim O'Reilly like others, uh, like Joe, became a good friend and, uh, and actually joined our board. Mm -hmm. And uh, Luke and I, basically around 2006, put it a question, should we actually open source Greenplum? You're fired. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. um, you know, Luke and I were fairly convinced that this was the thing that we had to do. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, 
the smart advice was not to do it then. Mm-hmm. Um, it was you know too early for enterprises to adopt open source. Yeah. Like back then, it was just sort of not done. Red, Red, Hat, Hat, was, was, Red Hat was the only model really, at the time. Exactly. Now you 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 know run it forward ten years later. There's almost no adoption of database technologies inside the enterprise that aren't based on open source. Yeah. And so um, to be able to come back to that uh, 10 years later is actually really exciting. Yeah.